Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we are going to cover a Biomed Basics, something that I never really thought to do until I got a suggestion recently at the MD Expo. They said, why don't you go over hand tools? I never thought about it. I never thought about it because I grew up on a farm and we just grew up using these and we generally knew how to use them, or did we? Coming up next, we're going to cover pliers. All right, everyone, this is going to be a good one because I'm going to use actual examples from my toolkit and from my tool bag. So I have a little bit of everything. You're going to find out I have a lot of redundancy, but that's because over the years I keep buying tools and you know how it goes. So let's go ahead and let's start out with your typical sliding joint pliers, which eh, I can tell humidity has definitely got my pliers here. But this is a traditional set of sliding joint pliers, all right? So it can go from small fasteners to rather large fasteners. These have been pretty much the same design for the last 80, 90 years or so. And they're pretty reliable, but you're gonna find out when we cover some other things that these have been kind of replaced by more functional tools. You will not find a set of these in my tool bag and that is because they're kind of heavy and they're not as versatile as some of our other options. So we do have large and small sliding joint pliers and most of these pliers have a very similar feature. Not just the sliding joint, they also have a wire cutter right here in the base of the jaws which is very useful. So they, they are a good set of pliers, don't get me wrong, it's just they have been replaced and you see I've got all sorts of them. So what did they get replaced by? Well this is a category of pliers that is all over the board when it comes to different functionality and different innovative designs. This would be the channel locks is the brand name uh, but they are slip joint pliers and these slip joint pliers or adjustable pliers they go to all different lengths and wow I am definitely gonna have to clean my pliers up. You can see humidity has just nailed some of these that are here in my drawer. That just goes to show you, this is a climate controlled garage and I still have humidity problems. But here is a set of slip joint pliers. They have a push button on this style and you can move them from point to point. And one of the most important things about slip joint pliers that you should be aware of is that the teeth are almost always in one direction. And that's because just like many other things like wrenches, which we'll cover in just a minute, there is a right way and a wrong way to use these type of pliers. The teeth have a direction for a reason. You can see right here that if I am grabbing onto a fastener, if I go one way, I'm going against the teeth. See that? So if I'm lifting up, but if I'm pressing down on the lower jaw, it grips in. So they're designed to be used like this, not like this, all right? So even though you can grab onto a fastener, you don't have the mechanical advantage if you're using them like this, okay? It's an overhead style design, and that's why if you take a look at the teeth, there we go, you can see that the teeth are all going in one direction. Okay, so they're designed to be used like this. So you're pressing down, you're pressing down on the handle here, okay? So that is the direction that they're meant to be used in, not like this. All right, and you're gonna see a very common trend. I'm gonna sort these pliers as we go through them. Um, here is an old Craftsman set. Not as useful. So one of the other things that you're gonna notice about these is that some of them have a curved jaw some of them have a straight jaw. And there is a new innovation of slip joint pliers, which I do have here in my bag. And this is made by Nipex, and this is straight jaw. See that? See how the jaws move linear to one another? Whereas these ones here open like a V, so they go like this. So the linear jaws open and close like this. 
the V jaws go like this, all right? So you see that? You're actually tilting the lower jaw, whereas this jaw here, it does not tilt. So this one actually acts more like a boxed end wrench, an adjustable boxed end wrench. Depress the button, select your size, and then it moves the jaw linear to the top jaw. Very cool, very interesting design. So next, after the adjustable pliers or the channel locks, we would have the lineman's pliers. The lineman's pliers are a very useful tool. They're, they're very heavy and heavy duty. They're meant for electricians, but we as biomeds, we can use them for a lot of purposes too. They are a non-adjustable set of pliers, but they have extra features. One of the features is going to be your cutting jaws, which are pretty pretty beasty, that's for sure. Um, you can see on this set here, we have a, a high torque gripping surface where you can crimp. And right here is another crimp. So we've got cutting jaws, we've got a crimp, and we've got a squash crimp. Um, and plus you got a really high torque crimp, which is right up here. These have so many different functions for them. I, I can't even begin to explain all the purposes of why I've used lineman pliers. But um, they're a good set. I keep them in my box, not in my tool bag, because they are kind of heavy. If you were doing lots of electrical, I would probably keep a set of these in my tool bag. But it is what it is. That's the lineman pliers. So the next set of pliers that we have here, let's see. I've got non-lineman's pliers, fixed jaw. I have needle nose pliers. Needle nose pliers come in a variety of different forms, but the one trait that they all have is that the points taper down. They usually have a set of cutting jaws in them, but these are light duty cutting jaws. Let's see, do I have another set of needle nose? Yes, I do. So I've got various types of needle nose. The reason that these are for fine work only is because you're losing leverage from the point where it rotates to the tip. You're losing a lot of leverage and there's not very much grip surface area. So these are mainly for holding springs, positioning things while you tighten them down, stuff along that nature. They're not meant for gripping onto fasteners while you tighten things down. It's more for detail work. So that's the needle nose. There's various types. You can see like these ones here are super thin, so you have to be very delicate with these. All different types of needle nose and I do believe I have a set of needle nose in my tool bag. You can always use a set of those. Vice Grips. Vice Grips is another brand name. These are locking jaw pliers. And there's a variety of different technologies that allow them to lock, but there's usually a tensioning screw. And then the pliers will latch onto something. Locking jaw pliers or vice grips, these are one of the most useful tools in your entire inventory. And that is because if you have fasteners that are rounded off, if you need to hold something that's hot, there's so many uses for vice grips. But let's go over some of the other features to them. So not this is, this is actually a set from surgery. These are very expensive. Uh, as you can see right there, made in Germany. These ones were part of a surgical kit. So I think the OR treats them as a disposable. Um, but anyway, that's why I got them. So there's always a release lever. Or there's certain types that don't have a release lever uh, because it's built into uh, their mechanical actuation. But you have different types of jaws. So this set here I really like because it's got a fine set of jaws plus a curved set. And usually, on locking jaw pliers, you will have teeth teeth for cutting so there's also a cutting jaw these because of the mechanical advantage are one of your strongest cutting tools in your entire inventory see I have a needle nose set and I have a standard curved jaw still have the cutting blade that is the locking jaw pliers so one of the next ones, even though this isn't pliers, it is completely related, which is why I'm gonna go over the crescent wrench or adjustable wrench. Um, I keep this in with my pliers just because 
These are good for holding on to fasteners while you tighten something down or for being a multi-use tool because you can hold and you can handle a whole variety of diameters with this one little tool, which is why it is in my tool bag because it's not very heavy. This particular one is a set that I did a video on. It's a super thin jaw. You can see a traditional jaw. This one here is thin. See how thin those jaws are? And that is used for casters and various other things in the field, but those pliers are in my toolkit. So that is the crescent wrench or adjustable wrench. It is not a set of pliers because it's only one handle, but it does uh, do the same function as pliers, which is why it's in my pliers drawer. Let's see, we have other types of lineman pliers. So these are uh, electrical crimps. You can tell based on its size and function that these are also gonna be used by electricians in the field. And these have a cutting jaw, they have a crimp jaw, and they have a high torque crimp jaw. Very cool. I use these all the time when I'm messing around with small bits of metal. They work almost like a tin snip because of this point and their cutting blades. Good set of pliers. Uh, let's see, I have other crimping pliers. You can see that this is a different format. They got various different sizes. Same cutting jaw at the tip. I have compounding action cutters. So these are also a surgical tool which was getting disposed of and I said, hey, 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 I need those. They got carbide jaws and what they do is they compound the mechanical advantage from here to here to here. So a lot of movement here leads to a little bit of movement here, but what it does is it compounds the amount of force. So I can cut through lots of different types of metal with these. Very special pliers. It's basically a bolt cutter, but shrunk down. These can cut stainless steel pins. Um, a lot of fasteners that are, that are a little bit proud of their surface, you can cut them flush with these. That's a cool set of pliers right there. Kind of rare, but nonetheless, I still have them. We have hemostats, forceps, or uh, detail pliers. This set here is super cool because it's really long. I think I got this set from uh, Harbor Freight. But the cool things about these ones is you can hold fasteners or you can grab things that are deep down inside or you can hold things while you're soldering like wires. These type of hemostats, they're usually really long and they have locking jaws back here. So when you clamp down on something, you lock them and it's held really tightly. So these are super cool pliers. Um, if you ever see these, just laying around, nab them. These are one of the most useful tools and I definitely have a set of these in my toolkit. So hemostats, locking pliers. Well, the next set of pliers is something that as you gain experience, you're going to need. And these ones right here, I don't know if you guys have seen them. These are Eclip pliers. And you can see, based on the point, they have replaceable points, different styles, and there's internal and external eclip pliers. And here is a set of internal, which means they squish the ring towards the middle. And this is external, which means you, you widen the ring and you make it go towards the outside. Now, you're gonna use these anytime you have like a stainless steel rod they will have a washer and then they'll have like an e-clip retaining it. And it's a very common thing in medical equipment to use e-clips or retaining clips. So there's internal and external pliers. This isn't necessarily pliers, but just to let you guys know that this is something that I do keep and they're very handy and that is utility shears. Utility shears are stronger than your average everyday uh, scissors, but at the same time, uh, I don't necessarily have them in my tool bag at the moment because they can be very heavy, right? And for that, I have them in my toolbox, but not in my tool bag. In my tool bag, 
are just the basics. But if I need to cut something in the field, that's why I keep a knife on me at all times. So guys, uh, that is a pretty much a rundown of most of my pliers. We will go over wire strippers and stuff in another video. I've got a whole series of these videos that I'm going to do. But um, that is a pretty much a rundown of all the pliers that I'm going to use in the field. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Stay tuned because I'm going to be doing more of these hand tool videos over the next couple days. And we're going to cover all the basics for regular hand tools.